Hey everybody, it's uh, Bosco Piper UK, Friday the 18th of uh, November 2016 and I'm actually in my garage now um, and I've just been kind of uh, setting up a mini kind of work area that's my uh, workbench, I've got a drill wedged in there and I've got that which I bought when I was on vacation and um, I'm going to be polishing up some pipes because it is time for another pipe cull um, and in the next uh, week or so, I'm going to be putting a load of pipes up for sale. There you've got uh, my tools and sandpaper and whatnot. Um, so, I'm going to be having a Perdomo Fresco. Um, and haven't done any real research on it other than to say that this appears to be um, a more of an economical um, cigar, but still jam-packed with good quality cigar leaf. So this is the Medora version, there is a Connecticut version. Um, so I'm really looking forward to trying this out. I'm gonna get it lit as I'm only one-handed at the moment and I'll come back to you. So I've uh, given it a V-cut, um, which you can see there, using my new V-cutter. And uh, for this cigar, so far, it seems to be pretty good. The cigar, the drawer is wide open. Producing a huge amount of smoke straight away. <clears throat> the the, uh, the wrapper aroma was um, very nice. Quite a rich, snuffy kind of aroma. <clears throat> and a little bit of cedar in there. And the initial flavours. Bearing in mind, I've just taken a swig of chocolatey coffee. But um, initial aromas is creamy, nutty, like toasted kind of flavours. Bit of cedar in there, bit of sweetness. Almost a bit of a tinge of vanilla. But with any cigar reviews, when I say vanilla in a cigar review, um, you're not talking expecting to get the flavours of vanilla pod in your mouth. It's really just a, uh, a hint, an allusion to the taste of vanilla. When you're trying to, uh, this, is, this applies to every review really, for me anyway, when you're trying to explain to other people what you're tasting, at the end of the day we've all got different palates and um, you know every, we all experience things in different ways. So sometimes, I mean, I'll give you an example. Shortcut to mushrooms are pipe tobacco. And um, the idea of that tobacco is, although it obviously hasn't got mushrooms in it, but the, uh, the earthiness of, of the flavor of some of the blend is supposed to give you the impression of the flavor of mushrooms. When I smoked it, it was more, it was a bit of a, a bit of a Latakia kind of sweet blend. Occasionally I'll get a little hit of earthiness, but it's only a hint at a particular flavour. It's almost, I wouldn't go so far as to say it's poetically kind of, um, sort of a, a stretch to that kind of flavour. It's just an illusion, it's a hint. We're not talking about aromatics here. Aromatics are actual flavours. They're physical flavourings which are added, casings, toppings which are added to the blend. So um, a cherry or a chocolate or something like that, amaretto, they will have flavorings put in, whether natural or artificial, they'll have flavorings put in there to give you those flavors. I'm not talking about that. Here I'm talking about a natural cigar leaf, which is giving you an impression of a flavor. So, in this particular case, when I say um, vanilla, it's because it's got a certain um, sweetness to it, which is hinting at uh, vanilla. Um, that's just an aside anyway. It's got a nice coffee finish. Anyway, I'm going to smoke that through and I'll come back a bit later. Um, in terms of construction, I didn't mention that before. It's got a, a really dark wrapper. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Like a cocoa coloured wrapper. Um, it's a quite... Um, it's quite tight. 
it feels quite tight. There's, there's not much give in it until you start smoking and it warms up. Um, it almost feels like it might be a bit dry. And I did notice a little bit of cracking. I don't know if you can see that there. You can see that, that's lifting a little bit there. But it's not nothing terrible, smoking fine. Um, but uh, it's an attractive cigar. Um, it's, uh, it's not seamless. But it's, um, I think it, I almost had the impression that it had a slight box press to it, but can't really see that anymore. I mean, it does round off once you start smoking it anyway. But um, I don't know if you can see a bit of a, a slight sort of maybe a rounded box press there. Smoking very, very well. Loads and loads of smoke. Very easy draw. I would say it's just um, mild, maybe a touch over mild at this moment in time. So I will catch you a bit later. Hey, I'm uh, approaching the band now and um, it's been very, very enjoyable. Um, I've recently been sort of smoking more Cubans. And um, it's nice to go back to a, a New World cigar and get those really nice, robust Maduro flavors, which you don't really get in um, in a Cuban. The Cuban flavors tend to be more, um, how can I put this? They, they, they were more of a, to say refined, it would be unfair to the New World cigars because New World cigars are great. It's just a completely different sort of flavor profile, a blend of flavors. It's a different, it's a more robust kind of flavor. I think that's a good way of, describing it, whereas the Cubans are a more, um, mm, they're, well, let's just say less robust. Um, certainly on these, I mean, on, on, on the Connecticut ones and uh, lighter versions, you will get uh, less robust flavors, but it's nice to come back to a, a New World cigar and, and really get those enjoyable rich, woodsy, um, earthy, cocoa, coffee in abundance. On, on Cubans, you know, you've really got to pick a good cigar to get excellent flavors. You've got to be fortunate that it's a good batch. You've got to be fortunate that it's had some age, it's had some time in, time in the humidor. You've got to be fortunate that the construction is right. And I have to say that I've really, um, of late been enjoying the Cuban cigars for I mean I started smoking cigars in January this year and um, well December January time and at that stage I knew very little and um, I'm not saying that I know much more now but I certainly knew very little then and um, and you didn't know the difference between Cubans and non-Cubans so I naturally bought what was available here in the UK and I started off with um, Cubans and um, I just seem to be unfortunate in that almost every other Cuban cigar I had had issues with construction and it really put me off and that's when I went over to New World Cigars and I was just blown away by the consistency of the construction um, so really from around probably March February, March time, up until very recently, I've been smoking almost exclusively, almost, not completely, but almost exclusively New World cigars, and I've been really enjoying them. In the last couple of weeks, well, maybe month, I've really been rediscovering the Cuban cigars and understanding a bit more about them, a bit more about selecting them, and about some which have got a bit of age on them. I do find that the really old ones I struggle with those because you really don't know what you're getting. Ones from you know 20, 25 years old, um, unless you know the provenance or you've had the box yourself from the beginning, which I certainly haven't. Um, you, you, you take a risk. I mean, I've gone to JJ Fox. You know, you can't go to a more um, recommended, steeped in tradition vendor of cigars, and I've bought cigars from them, aged ones from say 1999. So you're talking about 16, 17, 18, 20 years old. I've, I've bought a fair few of them and. Most of them have not been enjoyable. They've either lost flavor or they've been brittle, even at JJ Fox. Whereas recently I've been buying those uh, Magnum 50s. I've slowly been building them up. I buy, you know, every few days I've been buying another two or three. Um, and I've probably got about 10 or 12 of them now. 
and um, from 2008 and they're just fantastic smokes um, so I've been rediscovering that so um, coming back to one of these is it's it's nice to come back to that because they've got much more I wouldn't say delicate flavors because some of them are really full-on the Cubans but they just can't match the South American cigars for um, strength of Maduro flavors um, so as I say really enjoyable anyway I'm uh, you know, just summarise and then call it a day. A great cigar, really nice. Yeah, it might lack a little bit of smoothness, but it's really an enjoyable, very, very good cigar for the money. Um, and it's been consistent throughout. You don't get the stages that you get so much with Cubans. With Cubans, you can expect often to have, you know, two or three different stages and flavour profiles within the same cigar. And I do find that with New Worlds, you've got cigars, you don't really get that so much. Your flavour is your flavour. You, you might, you know, sort of increase in, in uh, intensity and strength as you go down the cigar, but not in terms of profile. I've got to take the band off. Um, so this one, as I say, it's been consistent throughout. The construction has turned out to be very, very good. The ash hasn't uh, fallen off. I've had to take it off, so it's pretty strong ash. Nice grey stacking beautifully there. So all in all... A lovely, lovely cigar. I wish you all a fantastic weekend and um, hope you all manage to get a rest. And thanks everybody once again for uh, supporting and watching my channel. I will catch you on the next one, no doubt.